What is up guys, it's Jay here, Jay Media one and today we got a really cool uh, little tip and trick type of deal. We're going to do some Mac OS Monterey features. And with this, we're going to learn about some really cool features that was just released with the new uh, Mac OS Monterey operating system for Mac. And this operating system is pretty cool, so I thought we would talk about some cool features with it. Uh, let you guys see what uh, what's new, what's cool out there, and uh, we'll go from there, guys. So let's give it a look. Let's go. Okay guys, so the first cool feature we're going to talk about is the feature to erase all content and settings. And with Mac OS Monterey, restoring a Mac to factory, factory settings works a lot more like it does on the iPhone and the iPad and iOS. With an erase all content settings button, you can now erase your Mac without needing to go through the hassle of reinstalling the operating system. This feature will wipe the Mac, but it leaves the operating system in place so that the machine can be sold or traded in. And it's so much more convenient than prior methods that it's made the number one on our spot list. Note that you do need to have a Mac with a T2 chip for erase all content and settings to be available, as it's not compatible with older machines. So in order to do this, you want to go to System Preferences up here. So go to Little Apple. Go to System Preferences up here. And in System Preferences, you have this System Preferences tab here. So we click that, we click on Erase All Content and Settings, and then it's gonna ask for your password. So you type in your password. Once your password's typed in, it will tell you basically that everything is going to be erased. It's telling you that your Apple ID is going to be signed out, all fingerprints used for unlocking and purchases will be removed. All the Bluetooth accessories will be unpaired, your Apple wallet items including the Apple card will be removed, and your location sharing is going to be off. That is perfect. That's exactly what we needed to do. So then you click continue. It's going to ask you to sign out of your Apple ID. Once you sign out, it's going to ask you to turn off location settings, and once that happens, it's going to begin the wiping process. We're obviously not going to do that here, so we're just going to go up to Erase Assistant. We're going to quit. As we talked about before, if you hit Command Q, it quits out of every application. So that's always an option. So that was number one on our list. Next we're going to talk about AirPlay to Mac. So with enhanced AirPlay support on the Mac, content from an iPhone or an iPad can be AirPlayed to display of a Mac, something that wasn't possible before. AirPlay to Mac also works with Mac to Mac transfers so that you can display one Mac screen on another. AirPlay to Mac allows users to extend or mirror an Apple's display to a Mac, and since two Macs are supported, a Mac can use another Mac as an external display in sort of a target display mode feature clone. AirPlay to Mac, both wirelessly or wired using a USB-C cable with wired connection, it's useful for cutting down on any possible latency. You can also use AirPlay to turn on your Mac, turn your Mac into a speaker that's paired with other AirPlay 2 speakers for multi-room audio. And you can use AirPlay Apple Fitness Plus workouts to the Mac. AirPlay to Mac works with 2018 or later MacBook Pros or MacBook Air, 2019 or later iMac or MacBook Pro, and the iMac Pro, and the 20 or 20 later Mac Mini. So this is pretty compatible. Works with a bunch of different devices. Basically, in order to use AirPlay to Mac, you're going to just go onto your phone. So you go onto your phone and you figure out what you want to watch. So if we just open, let me figure something here. We'll just open a, a YouTube. So we're going to go to YouTube. We're going to open a video here. And we're going to click on the little AirPlay up in the top, and it's going to say AirPlay and Bluetooth devices. 
So we click on AirPlay and Bluetooth devices, and once we do that, we can see that the MacBook Pro does show up now. So we click on MacBook Pro, and there it is. It's starting to play on the MacBook already. So we're going to just stop that, and we're going to get out of this. And once we do that, everything is done, and we're back to normal. Very cool feature, definitely worth, um, worth checking that one out. The next feature that we're going to discuss with you is FaceTime updates. Many of the FaceTime features that have been available in iOS 15 are also included in macOS Monterey version of FaceTime. There's a create a link feature for FaceTime calls that makes it much easier to get people to join your call. As is similar to how Zoom and other video apps work and it's great for scheduling calls. PC and Android users can now join FaceTime calls from using the web using the FaceTime links that are created by Apple users. Apple also has added a portrait mode and effect to FaceTime calls on Mac so you can blur out the background behind you while you chat. A new grid view can show everyone on a call at one time and there are new audio modes. There's voice isolation which minimizes the background noise and focuses on your voice while wide spectrum can be used to highlight all the sounds if there are multiple users on your on the end of your call. FaceTime on Mac Monterey will be gaining all of the SharePlay features made available on iOS devices in iOS 15.1, but SharePlay was not ready for release when Mac OS Monterey launched, and it'll be coming out at a later date. Everyone, I think, understands how to FaceTime on a Mac. It's very simple. You click over on FaceTime here, once FaceTime's open, it'll show you a list of people that you're able to FaceTime with here. You click on new FaceTime, but this is where they say you can create a link. So if you click on create a link here, <clears throat> you can open up your messages, and then you see the, the link pops up right here in the middle. And then you just type out who you want to send this link to. And like I said, you do not have to be a... Um, you do not have to be a Mac user for this to work. This will work on Android devices. It'll work on Windows. So everybody can kind of join in together. That's one of the cool features. If you click on new FaceTime, you can see that you can add multiple users now. So you can enter the name, email, or phone number. You can also select directly out of your contacts. You can select up to 12 people, and you just click on this little FaceTime button here. And it starts calling everybody at once, which I'm going to cancel because it's late at night and everybody probably does not want to hear from me at this time. So that's how that works. And there's other cool features inside of there as well, like the blurring out the background and things like that. I just don't feel like FaceTiming anybody at this point of the night to go that far into it. Another cool feature inside there is Quick Note. Uh, the Notes app in macOS Monterey has been enhanced with a new Quick Note feature that's designed for jotting down notes no matter what you're doing. This is very similar to what you would see on an iPad. iPad does have the Quick Note. If you swipe up from the bottom of the screen, um, you're able to access a Quick Notes. Um, if you place your cursor at the very bottom right corner of the display, a little note icon pops up. You can see down here. And it lets you make a quick note here. And so inside of that note, we can just type in whatever we want. And then we can close it and it will be saved automatically to um, quick notes. Um, quick notes are saved in a dedicated section in the notes app and they can be accessed across all devices that way. The next fun feature we got is Safari tab groups. Apple initially planned to tweak the design of Safari and macOS Monterey, adding a redesigned tab bar that better blends into the background of the web page. But after complaints, that plan was scrapped and Safari largely looks like it did in Big Sur. If you like, you can enable the new compact design in the preferences section of Safari. There is a more notable Safari change. And that's called tab groups. With tab groups, you can save groups of tabs together and then revisit them later. If you're planning a vacation, for example, you might want to have several tabs that you want to open and revisit later without having tabs take up your entire Safari tab bar. With tab groups allowing you to save everything and then open it all back up later. So basically you can add a bunch of tabs here and save them all together as a group. 
and you can click down here and if you see new tab group with six tabs that will let you start the tab group you can label it whatever you want so if you want to label it vacation up here enter and now this group of pages will open when I click on this tab group which is just really fun neat and super useful another fun feature is the animated Memoji avatar Memojis can now be set as macOS avatar showing up on the lock screen in place of the standard still image in system preferences you just go through uh, Safari uh, you just go to system preferences down here uh, you click on your profile <clears throat> as you can create or choose a memoji to serve as your avatar now so you can click on a little giraffe or you can click on a bear or you can click on a tiger whatever you like you can choose a favorite pose and a style which adds a background color and then you just click save to save it uh, the memoji will animate on the Mac's lock screen when you lock into the Mac if you do something wrong like enter your password wrong you'll see the memoji react which is kind of fun and cool Emojis and initial monograms are also options for Mac avatars in Monterey. Plus there's a new suggestion tab that houses various profile picture options, which you can see is, is right here. So you can select all of these um, guys down here if you like. You know, you got these flowers and this gingerbread and all kinds of neat things. Um, emojis, you know, there are these guys right here emojis um, within the memojis you can see that the the pose is is also available so if I click on the bear I can click on the pose of the bear so I can make him stick his tongue out you can also come down here and zoom in on the the memoji and you just click save and now that will show up there it also shows up on the lock screen okay so another fun feature focus so focus is more tailored version of do not disturb basically uh, it's meant to let you focus on what you're doing at the current moment while blocking out unnecessary distractions. As an example, you can create a work focus mode that minimizes notifications for non-work related apps to help you better concentrate without interruptions. Apple has a built-in focus modes for things like sleep and driving and you can create uh, custom focus modes. If you look up here, it's on do not disturb right now, but these are the focuses that I have saved inside of here. I have personal, I have work, I have sleep, and I have driving. You can click on focus preferences right here, and you can create your own custom focuses. You can add one down here. You can put one in, for example, that says gaming. And then within this, you can turn it on or off here. But you're, you can set up the options here to allow notifications only from certain people. Like you can allow calls from just your favorites. You can allow repeated calls. So you can, a second call from the same person within three minutes won't be silenced in case of an emergency situation. So that's cool. You can allow time sensitive notifications as well. So that would be one of the options that you can put inside of, of here. You can also click the plus button and click on all the contacts that you want to allow while you're doing this. You can also do things like turn on automatically the wireless controller while you're gaming. You can add a time-based automation, a location-based automation, and an app-based automation. So those are pretty cool. And then you can click on share focus status, which will tell the apps that you have notifications silenced and allow people to notify you anyway if something is really important. So that's just a really cool one. Driving is automatically built in there. I have allowed for my wife to call while I'm driving, but you can set that to whoever or whatever you want. You can set it to nobody. Um, but it also will share the focus status that you're driving, which is cool. Personal, you select certain people that you want to call you sleep, or if you're at work, same thing. Very cool, cool feature. Basically, like it says, just a, um, just a super advanced do not disturb. So shortcuts. The shortcuts app that was first introduced on the iPhone and iPad is now available on the Mac. So you can ask, access all your favorite shortcuts. Apple has designed Mac-specific shortcuts that are available in Gallery, and you can make your own. Shortcuts has been updated with next action suggestions to make it easier to create new shortcuts, and your Automator app workflows can be converted into shortcuts. For Pro users, there's an Apple Script integration and a Shell Script compatibility. 
Shortcuts are deeply integrated into macOS Monterey and can be run from the dock, the menu bar, the finder, spotlight, using Siri, and they're universal. So shortcuts made on your iPhone could be used on your Mac, which is super cool. Um, you know, you have the spotlight search here, and typically, if you type in shortcuts, that wouldn't have came up before, but now it does. And so these are all the shortcuts that I have built inside of here. And you can find these online. You can download them. Some of them are extremely useful. Some of them are, you know, minimalist, like Calculate Tip. It's a cool shortcut. You click on Play. It'll tell you how much is it. You type in $20, and you hit Done. And then you ask. it'll ask you how much of a percentage you want to leave them. So you do 15 And then it'll give you the, the answer in totals. Um, there's also several shortcuts like Play New Music. You can have Siri set an alarm. When do I need to leave by? Uh, eject water, which isn't really needed anymore. So there's all kinds of neat little shortcuts that you have, and they will make your life a lot easier. There's a shortcut on here that you can use to clock into work. If you use like ADP, for example, to clock into work, there's a shortcut for that. There's all kinds of little neat um, shortcuts inside of here, and it's something that you should definitely experiment with. But I like how they deeply integrate it now to where you can use it with Siri and things like that on the Mac. So the one th last thing to note is that universal control is coming very, very soon. And one of the headline features of Monterey uh, will allow a single mouse and keyboard uh, to work across multiple Macs or iPads. So if you have a desktop set up with an iMac, a MacBook, and an iPad, you can use one mouse and one keyboard to control all three. Universal Control is not yet available because it was not ready for the macOS Monterey launch, but it will be coming in a future macOS Monterey update. And when it does, we will also talk about that. Okay, guys, well, this has been a pretty fun video, Lightning. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, make sure that you mash the like button, hit subscribe, and Stay tuned because we will see you guys in the next video. Later, guys.